Good morning, Westeros. And welcome to our Morning Throners podcast. I'm Nelson. I'm Jeff. And I'm Kyle. And we're the fucking Morning Throners. And welcome back to another episode of your favorite Song of Ice and Fire podcast. We are your Morning Throners, and we have Sansa 5 on deck. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Pretty good. Wrap up this little saga of four four chapters. Bang, Wrap it bang, up. Bang, bang. I mean, I guess it's it kind of leaves it open at the end. I just here, mean right? the next one's not Tyrion or Sansa. Yeah. 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 That's we're just fair. Breaking away. I feel like we're still we end on more uh, wanting more. How's that? Still very much in it. Yeah. But we're yeah, not. For we're, sure. we're going away for a little bit. Yeah. What do you think? Kyle, Kyle? What do we think? Um. This is this is one of those ones where I you know I I feel like it's like. Despite not having really much evidence or signs pointing to this having happened, I should have figured this out, right? I, I, I don't know if I should have figured it out. I feel like it's a miss, though. I guess. Um, like like, I don't know. I he, think it would, I think you're not. I think you're discrediting yourself. It's the one thing that I would say is like I. I think we've kind of been like, where's Littlefinger? Where's Varys yeah. been? Well, and, uh, I feel but, like we've been more like that with Varys. I was I was thinking yeah. about this like when I was going through. I was like, should Kyle? Did Kyle have a chance about this? And my answer was like, no. I don't think so either. I th- and I think that's kind of what I'm trying to say, though. I just, But I feel like I should have, right? Like, this feels like one of those that was like an easy, not much of a stretch, but would have made me seem, <laughs> seem on the ball. I think the, the more, I think recently it's been harder to guess. I think this probably would have been easier to guess when Sansa and Dantos first started talking, which was literally like midway through Clash of Kings, right? Like early Clash of Kings. But at that point, I think like Littlefinger was around. Right, so this is the chapter where Sansa like gets out of King's Landing and onto a boat with Littlefinger. So there's the synopsis, so people kind of understand what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. I think recently, for the past like half of a book, Littlefinger's been in the veil. Yeah, air quotes, right? Supposed to be oh, in the yeah. veil. So I don't think you really had a, a chance to think about that. But if you would have pieced together, like, okay, Dantos did say I have a friend. He's going to help us. It'll be during the wedding. Like he he told us some of this stuff early on. I think at that point, if you're taking guesses, like who's the friend? That probably leads to like various little finger type people, so that kind of narrows it down. But we weren't really like thinking about that way back when. And that's kind of, I guess, what I'm saying is it, it 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 seems easy, but it's not. And it seems like one that I I could have managed to fabricate. It would have been a crazy guess if, or a crazy prediction if you got it in my book. <laughs> okay. Because I probably right, like though, first time reading it through, I was like, wait, who the fuck is Peter? And... <laughs> oh, I mean, I figured that out once I got out there, and and yeah. like it really made sense because. I mean, Dantos, you knew, had to die, right? He was, like, we're jumping all around here, but, like, he, he was definitely just a useful idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Kind I mean, of a sad, that was even sad, his sad vibe to the, to the yeah. John Quill. Yeah. Well, let's get into it, I guess, unless there's any big points, so we can get to some of that as we go. All right. Yeah. So we come to the chapter. Sansa is, like, crying, tired, just ran to the godswood, and she recalls watching Joff die. So he's like, well, he wasn't dead when I left, but he was... On his knees, crawling, uh, clawing at his throat, and when she's hearing the bell, bell toll, and she's heard that before. Well, yeah, th- I think this right. is a good, really good point, right? Because the bells are like kind of one of the things that is throughout the chapter. She mentions it probably like twenty times here and there, like oh, and the bells were still tolling. But to your point, she heard this before. She did hear it before, and she was the POV. We got this before, right? When Robert died, I think the whole chapter where like we get the Sansa chapter after Robert Baratheon dies. Yeah, she's like like the bells are a big part. So I think this is like a parallel. Like she, like when the bells start, she's like, that's it. He's a hundred. That's official. Like he was dying. Now he's dead. Now he's because dead. This is the, they sign. don't, they exactly. don't ring the bells for yep. injured. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the King's been hospitalized. Yeah. Uh, when she, when she was running out too, she ends up running out with lady Tanda as well. And uh, lady Tanda's like, Oh, it's so sweet of you to cry over the person who killed your family. And this is like another kind of running theme. She cries like on and off throughout the chapter and like doesn't seem to know who she's crying for. At one point, yeah. she's like, why am I crying? Oh, I must be crying for Rob. But then she starts crying again on the boat at the end. And she's like, who am I crying for? Joffrey, Tyrion, myself? Like, I don't even know at this point. So pretty traumatic yeah. thing to, to watch. Well, 100%. I mean, just, yeah. for, just for the scene in general might might pull back some holy shit tears and emotion. Yeah, yeah emotion yeah. is running high for sure. Yeah, uh, do you have to be crying for somebody? You can just be like crying because of the occasion. Yeah, you know, over over because of the moment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so she gets into uh, the woods. She's got a, a stash of clothes hidden in an oak. 
So even though she wasn't talking about it the last couple of chapters, she was kind of preparing for this uh, this occasion. I know, right? It was like the night before last and all. And I'm like, well, like she obviously didn't forget about it. I, it was definitely a, a George was using it as cover, mm-hmm. right? Like he didn't want to yeah. give, give up this. Too much. Yeah. But and, still, uh, keep a surprise. Yeah. It takes her a lot longer to get undressed and, and dressed with uh, without her handmaids. And she actually wishes Shay was there at one point. Yeah, I didn't even write that down, but I thought that was kind of a weird line. Like, she's like, oh, I wish yeah. she was here. Uh, well, I mean, it's not uh, just like looking back on like how hard it was for like my wife to get in and out of her wedding dress and like how tedious it was just to go to the bathroom. Like you're saying fancy just, dresses are fancy are dresses. You, like how many buttons are up the up the back? Like, well, and most of these clothes are made for multiple people to be putting on like this. This true. The, her clothes are made thinking that she has a servant. Right. Kind of like armor assumes one, right? you're going to have a squire. Yeah. yeah they, it's assumed. Yeah. One thing in college, you know what was crazy? You had these like when, I, when we're all drinking and whatever in college, I probably pee five or ten times throughout the night because we're just drinking so much beer. <laughs> you or needed somebody to help. <laughs> Is that where you're I'm going saying, with this? There was girls walking around in rompers. Right. Oh, I would yeah. see girls walking around in rompers. I was like, oh, yeah. my God, that girl. Yeah. Yeah, take that the whole way out. It's got to come worst, all the way down. Dude. It has to come all the way down. Worst. The things they do to the side. To look good, you know what I mean. Yeah, I wasn't even the big romper beauty, fan, her, but like a beauty kills is that the, the <laughs> you're going through it. Rompers did take the storm. Uh, oh, yeah, they, they took were by storm for a yeah. couple of years. <laughs> they and... did. Yeah, maybe we're dating ourselves by saying that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she does mention. I think she's crying again here, and she's like, "Am I crying for Rob?" I think she says I'm crying for Rob and Marjorie. She feels bad for those two because they're like, oh, I think Lady Tanda says again, like, oh, how bad to get killed at your own wedding. And she's like, well, Rob got killed at a wedding. Like, too. Fuck him. He deserved yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm crying for Rob. And then, oh, my gosh, Marjorie has lost two husbands. Now she's twice widowed. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. sad. Bad luck. That's Marjorie. Sad. Yeah. Don't marry Marjorie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the next bit is she focuses on her hairnet, right? Well, she gets she's starting to get dressed into these dark colors right like Danto said yeah what, what to, they're just trying to be inconspicuous uh and yeah she has his hair yeah, and now she's undressing she yeah she takes her hair net off and she looks at it and she's like oh shit i was supposed to wear this it was uh, it was all part of the plan that he said there was magic in it one of these stones is missing there's a black smudge here and she's like kind of she kind of like starts freaking out a little bit it kind of weird any thoughts on that yeah I guess yeah i mean right here i definitely figured it out I was a little bummed that it ended by her already figuring this out because this was going to be. I was like, "Oh, I'm sure this is uh, what killed him." So there, then, I will say that there's some speculation even in the fandom today about ex- like exactly what went down here. But yeah, I think that's a pretty much agreed upon thing is that the there was some poison involved and it started in Sansa's hairnet. Like, did Dantos take it out of her hairnet? Like that type of thing. Like who actually did what? Who moved the pieces during the wedding? Um, I think is still up for debate. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, unless we get a better recollection somewhere along the way, but yeah, but yeah, I agreed, agreed on that part. The hairnet important, which again, like in hindsight is maybe something that you could have thought about, but again, I don't think anyone. One (laughs) one thing I thought, (laughs) one thing I thought was weird was when she realized that it was missing and, and started speculating that it was something dangerous. She's continuously rubbing her finger over the smudge. Like I, what, what if it's really potent? And she like I don't know, like rubs her lip then, and, and that was <laughs> yeah, enough. True. Like, like have you ever know. cut jalapenos and then like scratch your balls? Like, I you'll feel that, that up to an hour. You, you'll feel that up to an hour later if you haven't washed your hand. I guess rub your eye goes the same way. Yeah, it's rough. A jalapeno on the balls. Um, but yeah, I think I think George says something like her thumb kept going to the empty socket like a tongue to a missing tooth, which, which is just a great. Everyone, everybody can re- recall that. <laughs> yeah. Everyone like the, knows what they're about. Just all day long. Like I lost. You just can't them. keep it away. Yeah, exactly. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing better too when like you have your first loose. That does. I guess it doesn't matter if it's the first one or not. But you have your loose tooth and you just like keep like flinging it back and forth with your tongue. Yeah, like on the th- string. Yeah, Ugh. I'm glad and I'm not kid anymore. Pop. Uh, that was <laughs> yeah. fun. I was not a fan of loose loose teeth. Either, I lied it, was, it is weird, right? Yeah, shit's just falling out of you. Supposed it's weird, to. like, if that were to happen today, we'd all be, like, freaking out. But when we're kids, it just, like, happens, like, every couple weeks. And we're like, ah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that so would be scary. Th- the last weird thing about this is she, like, stuffs it in her pocket. It's a smoking gun in her mind. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, I thought it also, like, can I use this later? <laughs> like, was it just one stone in this all this nah, hairnet? Or, like, it has to be, be every stone, right? 
You would think. It'd be too I mean, hard to. Uh, oh, you have to. You have to pick the third from the left and two down. So does Sansa have a pocket full of like really badass poison right now? <laughs> um, one would think, right? I mean, that's my. Because when she hears the noise, that's the first thing she does. Again, I think it's probably more like hiding the evidence than trying to conceal yeah. it for later. But oh, for sure, yeah, right yeah, after yeah, this, she... she hears a noise, right? I mean, she's like scared. She's of just it. trying I don't to hide she, it. Exactly. <laughs> she's not planning on like, yeah. Ooh, who who got to use this on next? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just. Saying, she doesn't even, and like, she knows? doesn't even understand. <laughs> what, which is the next part? Like, Dantos pops out, right? Yeah. And she's like, "Oh my god! Like, what do I have in my hand? Like, you said this was magic. This is poison." And she doesn't really understand how it works, and I don't even know if Dantos does too. He's like, "Well, and he's magic. like, yeah, yeah, it's fucking magic. That's what I'm. That's what I've been telling you. It's magic. Like, yeah. you think I actually like, had no, magic for you, lady?" Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he's like, yeah, what did you expect? Like, you wanted out of here. I had to save you. Well, he gives the news that he's like, he choked on his pie. That's what happened. Like, that's <sighs> the story we're going with. And also, Tyrion's getting arrested. Like, yeah, they're all blaming him blaming for Tyrion it. for this one. She also, also, Tyr- he does some Florian Jonquil stuff, which, again, I just think is the, kind of funny because, like, he's pretending to be this knight from the songs. Yeah. We find out later he's just looking for money for his next year which has been the theme of her chapter for a while here too though yeah i think this is one that like george kind of hits the nail on the home like he has little finger points and things out later that like kind of oh yeah that he was gonna go sell you he'd tell you every time he can he that's all he was out for like well his quote that he had told sansa before all this is life's not a song you're gonna learn that the hard way and then he yeah. set her up yeah right? he sent dantos and's like hey pretend it's a song yeah, yeah. sell it to her like he knew she was gonna learn the hard way because he's the one Selling it to her. The yeah, the exactly. He wrapped it exactly to prove <laughs> that point. But I mean, the, yeah. she's been learning that, like I said, the past few. We've, we've talked about this at least the last two all Sansa the, chapters. All the nights and she's got the hound. Like the hound is the one that's yeah. around her. And yeah. she learns uh, that the ones that help aren't always like the nice Jamie Lannister looking ones. Exactly. Uh, one thing she realized, too, is that if Tyrion was arrested, they would suspect her of being in on the ploy as well. And, and she's the one with all most of the motive. I guess Tyrion just <laughs> and hated, the murder hated Joffrey. And she's got the murder. She's got the smoking gun. Another weird thing is at one point here, she thinks that Joffrey had once said that he couldn't abide the wailing of women. And Sansa thinks that Cersei is or the Cersei's, weeping of women. And she laughed inside at that point. But also, what did Joffrey just name his sword? We, we, Widow's Whale or something like that? Widow's Whale. Huh. Yeah. And Cersei but is not she's Cersei's not the one widow. She, she she's not she's, freshly widowed here. She is, she is a, a widow. widow. She is a widow and she's the one I mean Marjorie was crying too, but I mean he could have so they're both like they're both. He, yeah. he named it Widow's Whale because he was gonna kill a lot of husbands. He could have <laughs> named mm-hmm. it Mother's Whale. <laughs> And you know, I'm gonna go to a lot of sons. Yeah. But, yeah. 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 Um what was I gonna say? So like do we think you were talking about Marjorie crying. Like do do we think she actually cared for Joffrey? Uh cared? No. <laughs> okay. Scared of watching someone choke yeah. to death? Yeah. Yes. Traumatized. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And on her wedding day, and it is technically her husband. Okay. Fair enough. We can leave it at that. That was the last chapter. Anyway. The next thing Sansa thinks I think is kind of funny. She thinks about some old Nan's tales. She's yep. like, old Nan used to talk about how the Grumpkins could like grant a wish and would give you some magic item. It would give you some magic item that would like grant your wish. And she's like, I wonder, like, did I really? First off, did Tyrion could Tyrion have been involved? Did he know about the amethyst? Amethyst. And he was. Could you make wine. someone choke about putting an amethyst in wine? And she's like, could I have wished him dead? <laughs> and she's like, wait a minute, I'm too old to believe in this. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is crazy. <laughs> I thought that was like a funny line. She's like thinking like a child catches herself and it's like, you know, never, never mind. Dantos was drunk. He was also wearing his knight color, his family surcoat, which Joffrey had banned. He stops to puke. He. This is a rescue mission. Like this yeah, is a very this important. Is dumb. And like yeah, he, yeah. right before, like he Sansa notices it. he's dressed up in all this shit because he stops to puke in the serpentine stairway. <laughs> no, so if if you had think about you for a second, if you had to escape a, a a damsel in distress right now, and you had to run, however far this is, you'd be puking too. Without, I mean, they say without he's drinking, drunk. They without say he's drinking, drunk. you would puke. He has a very active job. I'll say the only reason he that he king. should be drunk is he literally did just kill the king. That is that is some intense stuff. Okay, that's true. That's true. So you're you're saying he's drinking away to like. The guilt. Yeah, this is like he had to hype himself up. Too. I'm saying he's just out. Of, he's fat and out of shape, and he puked from running too far. <laughs> we well, you know your take. 
<laughs> Either way, he's puking during the escape in the serpentine stairs. Like they're not in the security shit. area yet. They're still like wide out in the open, pretty much. <laughs> she had to he's hold him up like a clown. Not a clown, but he's wearing his house colors, which is pink, he's red, straight. and blue. Yeah, not not great. <laughs> well, he's got what's his the, night shit on. Yeah, what's the family he's name? He's drawing attention to himself. Hollard. House Hollard. Hollards, come on. Hollard's got to do better on, on the circo design. Yeah, red and white stripes with like a black bar on top with three crowns in the black. My my dude is not, yeah, he's not somebody you want in charge of you. And it, he, it was very obvious, right, that he, was, he wasn't going to live up to what he said he was going to. Hey, he got the job done. Yeah. Kind of. Binary scale, one. One, he, he's, yeah, true. On the binary really. scale, Donos is a one. Uh, his circo design zero, <laughs> zero for the circo. She's just captured by another another person now. Yeah, out of the frying pan into the fryer. That's a good point. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. different so situation. They're escaping. <laughs> they go down the stairs. They end up down a long hallway with a bunch of uh, knights in armor. Uh, real quick, he did say he wanted to wear his knight outfit for tonight at least. Yeah, he wanted to be a knight. At the end of the day, it's kind of like he died a knight, right? Because he was dressed as a knight. No, a fuck fool. this guy. He died a fool. I mean, fuck him, but he thinks he's dressing up as a knight for his escape, but it, and like thematically, he's a knight for his death. So I'm gonna say one thing. I'm not too mad that he tried to make a little coin off of this uh, transaction. I think it pro- will probably open Santa's eyes, like teach her, like she, like we yeah. said, she's been learning. I think this is gonna be like a good, a, a real he, good he learning had, lesson. He held a lot of risk doing this for for nothing. He was gonna I stay. Think a it's fool. a big surprise. I think it's a big surprise, right? Like, because yeah. the reader. For sure. I, I, I mean, think... he was. Yeah, let's get to it. We'll wait. We don't have to send. Let's not. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so they're going down the hallway, a bunch of uh, uh, knights. Uh, no, so I had a question. Was it. Were they literally, like, scaled like dragons, these suits of armor? So a lot of armor, it, I think you just had. Like, s- ring like, mail? Like, scallops? Scaly. Uh, think about, like, a, I think of it like a tiles on a roof, like shingles. Right, mm-hmm. which is which looks like scales. I think they call that scaled armor, where they're overlapping, yeah, like, a, like a fish scale. Yeah, but yeah. what about the front of the book, like this guy? I mean, if it's dragon helmet like that, I think <sighs> what, Je- what Jeff's getting at is this kind of like the dragon skulls, an old like secret hallway where they have old Targaryen armor, right? Okay, yeah. I'm not sure. I, I could take well, it either what way. What I imagine, point- like, do you remember? Do you guys remember uh, playing Super Mario, and you end up down this? It's a long hallway, and as you're running the picture changes from like a happy scene to like yeah. Bowser's face and you get trapped and you have to go into Bowser land in yeah. Mario Kart, like in a circus, super, Mario super, Mar- super Mario. Uh, I'll send you a video. There's gotta be a video of it. Um, but that's how I imagine. Like it started as suits of armor. And as you're running down, like each one transformed more and more into a dragon to like the last couple of suits of armor might've been actual dragons. I think like, she's just seeing them as dragons. Yeah, he. She also does say it's the shadows. But I think they might have. I think they have scales on them too, though. Like I think. I think there are yeah. more dragony than normal right. armor. I wanted to see if it was like leading us to the dragon room. I just thought that would have been a cool kind of lead. Yeah, I know you're saying it. that's that's but, the uh, secret room. Yeah, but but we don't. We just anyway, end up to a door yeah. that leads to a cliff. Yeah, and somebody came up this before, didn't they? Um. No. Cat maybe the cat come up it when she was snuck in nah she she came in normal i don't know not that i can think of off the top of my head okay she would have been the only person that i would have thought of a little quick map time we don't know exactly where but it's somewhere uh so somewhere on the cliff pretty much up river of the of the winch towers is is pretty much all we know because she passes the winch towers at some point so it's just cool i like i like looking at king's landing it's a lot of cliff, too, right? I mean, that can't be at a scale, I guess. That's the thing is, I can't imagine this climb is that bad. Like, Sansa thinks it's bad, but she's a little girl. Dantos is hammered as fuck, and he does this, <laughs> and he's fat. Like, it can't be that bad. He does have, like I said earlier, he does have an active job. So even though he's fat, he, he probably has, like, that fat guy strength. So, you know what I mean? He's probably somewhat, like, capable. But Sansa and Dantos are, like, two of, like, the least you would think physically capable people. It can't be that bad. Fair enough. Either way, they get the job done. They come down the cliff. They got it down. It's kind of cool that this little uh, man-made ladder climb was... It makes you think about who was doing it before, <laughs> like who had this put in. Exactly. What's the point of this for, normally? Just one of the secret entrances, right? Yep. So they get down there, and Santa, like, it's one of the things where you're walking down the stairs in the dark, and you don't, you don't remember how many stairs there are, and you, you think there's an extra step, and you... 
it's not there. She like falls on her back when she gets to the bottom and like freaks out for half a second thinking she like tripped and fell. Lands, she's happy, she's looking at the stars. And Dantos is like, "All right, we got to we got to go. We got a boat to catch." Yep. So then they get to a boat and he says, "Oswell." Oswell. Which to me sounded like a kettle black. Yeah, well, that is one of their names, right? No, I no, think it's Osmond it. and Os- Osfrey or something like that. Osmond, Osfred, and Osni are the three Kettle Black okay. brothers we know. This seemed like a dad because he was a old guy. But anyway, I, we get his name towards the end, right? Uh, I don't think we do. Okay, so this is a different guy than... Uh, well, there's a, there's another guy that's on there shooting. Lo- Lothar Brune is another guy. Yeah. Okay, that was, that was going to be a discussion when we get there, so we'll get there. Okay, so that's that's who Oswell it sounds like to me is one of the kettle blacks. Okay. So, yeah. Gotcha. All right, so we get to the the deal. They kind of get yelled at for talking a couple times because <laughs> yeah, like, Oswell noises. is just that these guys are talking. Yeah, he's like, shut the fuck up. This is covert. Noises, yeah. noises carrying across the water, you idiots. That's a good point too. I didn't think about that, but they I didn't do think care, about that at so. all. Oh, for sure. Another cool part is while they're ro- so they get in, they start rowing out. While they're rowing out, like Sansa's like they're rowing past the mast and burnt wreckage of like. Yeah, all, through all this shit from the Blackwater. Yeah. Like this has been like months from the like not a year, like not a full year, but it's been a while since the Blackwater, and like shit is still like. Just, I mean, they, I know, what do you expect to happen? Badass. You're gonna go know. in and clean it up? Like I don't. Yeah. know. You need one one good rain would walk. You'd think one good rain would wash <laughs> most no. of this. That's not how it works. So these are big ass galleys, and like yeah, <laughs> yeah they're smashed into the yeah. ground. Yeah, in like a river. Yeah, yeah. What are you talking about they're, they'll be there for a while. Yeah. It's a cool setting as they're like rowing out. It's creepy. I'm sure. sure it's eerie. Well, it's like the bone. It's like being at the boneyard. Bells ringing. She says mist starts coming up. A little little fog rolls in. I see it, thieves. Yeah. She mentions they go past the chains. Yeah. yeah. Like Tyrion's chain, chain tower. tower. Yep. They're still they're still working, but the chain's down. Uh, yeah. So they can go through. But they're still yep. operational. Which makes sense. Why would yeah. you take them down? Yep. And we come up on a trading galley with the little mermaid on the front. It bugs me that we don't get the name of this ship because I don't know where to put the description. Like this description make of this figurehead belongs somewhere. Would you make it your ship name? And <laughs> my ship name is Sea of Thieves. Thieves. One of them is already named after her, is Foam Drinker, which is uh, Dagmar Cliff Cleft Jaws ship, which is just a sick. Just name. you being original again. Yeah, he's he's good with that. This the figurehead is a mermaid. The figurehead of the ship is a mermaid with a golden crown blowing on a great seashell horn. Sounds sweet. Pretty cool. Burr, burr. Yeah. Yep. And they drop a ladder. Sansa goes up. Oswald comes behind. Dantos stays in the boat. Yeah, he's not making this voyage with them. So, did the other guy stay in the boat too? No, he got out. Okay, so he followed her. Up. He followed yeah. her up the ladder. Okay. Okay, yeah, you're right. The, the Orsman Oswald filed close behind her. Yep. Uh, and then Peter's there to to welcome her on. She's cold. He's like, he's worried. Takes his cloak off right away. Yep. Puts it over her shoulder. He knew it was her, or she knew it was him. And Dantos is like, hey, I got to get going. <laughs> he calls him by his first name. Peter. Yo, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, over the, they, so it's dawn. But I, you owe me ship. money. They've been rowing. They've been but they've been rowing. They're like out there because she says it's dawn okay. by the time they get there, right? So I mean, it still yeah, carries. I mean, that bay, that's a big. But they ass gotta bay. be out there. <laughs> yeah. A mile? What do you think? A mile offshore? Far enough offshore that you can't see it, right? They would have been like, "Wait, why is this trading galley just sitting parked out there?" <laughs> yeah, I was also thinking like, why are our Oswell and Dantos like not switching off? But like theoretically, Dantos had to row the whole way. Was supposed to be able to row. Was supposed to be rowing the whole way back himself. At least in Dantos's mind. Yeah. He's probably too drunk anyway. I wouldn't it have been smart to have like another set of oars in there. Just like, let's get, hey, everybody, grab an oar. Let's go. But they have to go on those things, yeah, well, though. If they needed to get going. Yeah. They might have, maybe, who knows? Maybe they did. But so he's like, I want my reward. Littlefinger's like, 10,000, was it? Uh, and he's like, yeah. And he's like, Lothar, pop, give pop, him a pop. reward. And yeah, a bunch of crossbow people shoot, stand up and they shoot him a bunch. And then Lothar throws the torch on it and then the ship just starts burning. And they walk off. Right <laughs> up. Sail off. <laughs> Sansa says she doesn't scream, but she like throws up. Yeah. In her mouth though, right? She doesn't like actively throw up. Yeah, right? like what did I walk into? She retched, it says. I don't know. To me that sounds like yeah, she throws. Yeah, maybe she did puke. Yeah. But the did, side. And what is uh what's the line she says about did I get uh 
You killed him. Ex- Had she escaped the Lannisters to tumble into worse? Mm. Yeah. Yep. Frying, out of the frying pan into the fire. Exactly. Little fingers like, yeah. He's like, don't don't worry about that guy. That guy, he, he fucking sucked. Like, don't waste your tears and your grief on that him. That was a nobody. Yeah. You're with, you're with Daddy Peter now. Yeah. But then she's like, but he saved me. And then he's like, no, wake up. Don't you see? Like, he was selling you. That's really what just happened. It was he? He sold you now. He'll sell you again. Like he knew where you went. Like you he's. Know, I don't know if he. I mean, he he took on a lot of risks to do this whole deal. I mean, he killed the king. But would he have if there was no money? That's the question. That's the probably question, not. Right? Yeah. Was he? Was any of it out of the goodness of trying to take care of Sansa? Yeah. Or was I guess I Sansa so. Sansa did save his life and didn't get anything in return. So. Well, she thought this was what was in return. I saved you. Now he's yeah. saving me. But that's not. That's and that's what Littlefinger's whole thing is. That's not what yeah. it was. It right. was you saved him because you're a nice person. He saved you because I was paying him to. He wouldn't have done it without mm-hmm. me. It's kind of. Yeah, what, and I it's think he's trying to get it's across, probably all true. and it's probably true. Again, I I like to think Dantos. We don't know. I like to think Dantos would have done it for less, or nah, he's, <laughs> he's too much. Less. Would have thrown her a bone every once in a while, or I don't know. But yeah, I don't. Know. I think he's too too scared too. He's just a drunk. Yeah, and that's kind of what sure. Littlefinger says. Is he's like drunk people are are great because they you can always get them. They'll, they always you can always want money buy to pay for the next drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is why we had to kill him. Because it's, they're gonna know you're gone. Yeah, he he was, and he said he was the perfect he was the perfect tool for this mission. You know, he was the flathead, yeah. and let's get him. Let's get you know, he'll do it just right, and we can kill him at the end and leave him leave him be. But I think here it's good because he says, "Lord, as soon as you're, they're gonna be looking for you, they'd be looking for him, and, and or they're gonna be looking for you." And Lord Barry is gonna be offering a lot of money for any information of where you are. Yeah, who's to say he wouldn't just fucking sell you out to them? We know he would because he just did yeah. to me. Yeah. He just sold you out to me. So we know he yeah. would sell he you out to very when he needed the money. A bag of dragons buys a man's silence for a while, but a well-placed coral buys it forever. He gone. Littlefinger dropping dropping lessons. Hard <laughs> lessons on Sansa. A lot there. of lessons on Sansa in this chapter. <laughs> Tough ones, yeah. The Littlefinger school of, of, of hard knocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so life's not a song, little girl. Like, come on. And Told she you. just wonders to herself, like, is it, is it all lies? Is everything a lie? Not me and you. Like, we're <laughs> you can we're trust me. Deal. We're the you real can trust deal. me. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, right. That's that's what's me. so fucked up is he's like, you could trust me. Like, I was everything to your mom. He like tries to tell her like, weird, weird, yeah, weird dude. Why would you ever say that to anybody, bring, let alone someone's daughter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't bring like that he, up. Weird, yeah, you should have been my daughter. Is pretty much what he's saying. Yeah. Yep. Weird, weird stuff. So uh, he does mention that they had to do it in the God's Woods because Varys's birds would have been uh, spotted His rats. there. His rats, His rats, they, little there, there's nowhere them. for them to hide uh, in the God's Woods. Which there's, this castle's got too many secrets. I feel like there's got to be a little. It's got to be a little secret. Seems like he's claiming most of the places Varys spies hide is in the walls or floors or ceilings. And mm-hmm. since the God's Woods is the woods, there's no walls or floors or ceilings. But it seems like yeah. you'd be able to hide in the woods if you... If yeah, you and it seems... You had if you're a good spy. Like, yeah, he's put <laughs> yeah. too much stock in this, like, the God's Wood is off-limits thing. Like, I don't, I don't know. Or, like, he can't come in there. Just... How do you just assume that? Right. I, I agree. It seems kind of weird. It's either that... Or, it's either him being too assumptuous or George, like... Be like, no, 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 trust me. It makes sense that Varys didn't know about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can't quite tell which one. <laughs> I can't argue with it. Fair enough. Uh, so then Littlefinger starts asking about the feast. Uh, how how were the singers? How was everybody? And, and how did uh, how did Tyrion like his jousting dwarves? Yeah. Your jousting dwarves? What? He's like, yeah, I got him for Bravos. Had to hide him. It was it was actually a huge pain in the ass. <laughs> the, and yeah, you expensive. think Joffrey was smart enough to do that? Is really what he said. Like, I had to explain <laughs> yeah. to him why it was so funny. Yeah. yeah, Joffrey's like, I don't like dwarfs. Why would I want dwarfs at my wedding? I don't yeah. want to look at these guys. Come on, Joff. Uh, yep. And, and then she gives the news that Tyrion got arrested. And he's like, oh, don't worry. You're going to be a, a great widow. Widow's yeah. going to look great on you. And then her tummy flutters, and she's like, oh, no, I'll never have to share a bed with Tyrion again. Is yeah. that Did, do I what want I want? That? that was a weird thought, but I think definitely, definitely want weird thought. That. She's been, a, she's been like <laughs> stone cold to him. Like, yeah, it's definitely been one of her main motives. I would agree. The only way you wouldn't want that is again, like kind of like what we were saying. If you realize you're immediately in a worse situation. Well, I think she's also like, I think it's also, I don't want him dead. Right. Or I don't want him in prison. Like I just, 
don't think I should be married to him. Yeah, he was nice. Right, he was nice to me. Right, like, but she does say like when and who was I crying for? She does mention him one time, but she also mentions Joffrey, who was never. I mean, I guess Joffrey was nice in like select there points. Was times. But, like he was so horrible to her. For I mean, he's still part, also like, somebody that's dead, no right? So that's yeah, why he's yeah. on the list. He actively yeah. just died. Yeah, he gone. But then Littlefinger takes her to her room and he shows he's got a bunch of clothes for her. And she's like, oh shit, all this was like for me. Which is like kind of weird too. And then he, again, because later, later Littlefinger's like, oh, I had no motive. But then Sansa's also at this point realizing like, clearly you care about me. Like you're doing all this to get me out. It seems like Sansa is the motive, if anything. Oh, for sure. He's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, super creepy. And again, I feel like maybe we've been a little bit too lenient on Tyrion. Uh, I, I shouldn't speak for everybody. I've been maybe a little too lenient on Tyrion on the creepiness towards Sansa, but I think part of it's just because I know Littlefinger is just <laughs> is way more creepy. So it's like compared to Littlefinger, everyone looks like a saint. But yeah, he's like, yeah, no one would suspect me. Basically, do things no one would ever expect. Because she's you like, why would you kill? The game. Why would you want to kill Joffrey? Like he helped you, he gave you terror. Keep your wild card. Keep him, keep him guessing is pretty much what he says. Like, like what the Never fuck, man? Your next move. You yeah. killed the king, though. Like, you can't be, like, just doing shit like that. Like, that's how you get yourself killed. I think this is going to come back to bite him, hopefully, at some point. But it probably won't. Knowing this fucking book, he'll live till the end. I don't quite agree that this is the strategy he's necessarily following, but it is a crazy strategy. Keep your foes confused confused so they never know what you're going to do next. Sometimes even, like, do, act against your own... <laughs> wishes just so they're like super confused sometimes you gotta lose a knight to to get the bishop in yeah yeah exactly, exactly. yeah that type of you thing. would know that if you were any good at chess which i think i think that does kind of lend some to to that as well that to Tyrion's whole su- supposition of uh joffrey right like here's here's a little finger this chapter saying like he's too stupid to fucking think two seconds ahead to even understand a joke. So how could he be thinking some of the stuff Tyrion assumed <laughs> about him, right? Like where he's like, Oh, he picked this knife. Cause he thought it was the, the, the plainest. And you know, he, well, he waited until they were on the road. So to me, that still puts, this actually puts Littlefinger back in this, the suspect list of, of who set up the, um, the brand killing the original brand killing. So uh, along those lines, not about who actually did the brain killing, but what happened after that? Littlefinger told Kat that Tyrion did it. Tyrion yeah. knows that. And there's been a few moments between Littlefinger and Tyrion. Again, there hasn't been that many chapters where they're both in the capital at the same time. For sure, yeah. They're very little interaction. Because Littlefinger did have to go to Renly's camp and come back, and now he's been gone and come back. But while they have been together, Tyrion has been like, I fucking know that you set me up with this dagger. Like... Whether he's the one that did it or not, you're the one that lied about Tyrion doing it. So, again, along with the does, Darf, does Littlefinger have any motives here? Like, if he set Tyrion up, then that's a motive. Like, that's he's basically like he knows Tyrion is an enemy. So, setting Tyrion up is another motive. When well, he's setting right? Tyrion up again, essentially, with this, right? Like, Tyrion's in jail well, currently saying. for this. Okay, yeah. It, like, it seems like he might have wanted that, right? If he has the whole yeah. dwarves thing, maybe he knew yeah. that would cause him. So like if he if this is a part to like set Tyrion up then again that's motive for Littlefinger because he knows Tyrion is after him already maybe not Which, actively after him but an enemy sus- suspect of before him. we uh yeah like Tyrion made the right the right call dumping out the wine right like I mean <laughs> I think we understood that at the time <laughs> but yeah like this I didn't say it earlier when we were talking about that black amethyst and all that like that made me think like oh yeah I guess that probably was the wine right it seemed to be. Well, if he, you're saying him dumping it out, yeah, he, he might have covered some poison, evidence, and he's like, yeah. "They're gonna, I'm the one that's the wine Barracks bearer at the evidence. moment. Let's not, let's get the bad wine out of here." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I have this cup of poison. Yeah. I'm not letting them test this. What's yeah. left yeah. in this chalice? So I guess that's the other side of it. Is exactly, yeah. Tyrion was trying to cover for himself, even when he did that. It wasn't just whoever whoever put it in there. It was also now they have nothing to test, like you said. You're not saying that you think Tyrion did it, just that Tyrion knew he would be blamed by so yes, get rid yeah. of any evidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. gotcha. Uh, but that also kind of makes you look guilty by bearing evidence too. I wonder how they test that back in the day. You know what I mean? They don't have any like pH strips. They're just taking like Dantos, Moon Boy, get over here. Give they either you know what I mean? do that, or maybe like yeah, I didn't even think about an animal. I was like maybe they pour it on like a plant and see if the plant <laughs> dies right away. <laughs> would wide kill a plant? Yes, it does. 
Uh, you didn't have point. a control, but yeah, let's give it to give it to Moon Boy. <laughs> so he, this is where he starts getting creepy. First off, he drops the Game of Thrones reference. Remember yeah. all this weird stuff I'm telling you when you play the Game of Thrones. Uh, the whole Leo Jeff's favorite meme, Leo pointing at the TV. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then he's basically like, yeah, me and your mom were friends. Uh, once she was all I ever wanted in the world. but More than friends. Her, her, she's a Tully and family duty on her meant she could never have my hand. And I think this is just shows you Littlefinger is like such a scumbag. But she gave me something finer. Something a woman can only give once. He respects, yeah. like he values having a girl's like virginity over their, being their wife. Right? Like, oh, it's okay though that I never got to marry her because... I got what was better. Like that I got the share. Like, I got the share of that one. He's thing. creepy. It's he's such creepy, a creepy man. thing to say. And again, saying it to Sansa is even yeah. <laughs> yeah, I banged your so mom. Much weirder. I banged your mom, Sansa Stark. I wish you were my daughter. Like maybe if he was like, Oh, I actually loved her Ned, Ned, and we were supposed to be together and she gave me this. Ha ha, Ned. But he's not yeah, he's not talking Sansa. about love. He's like, Yeah, it's so weird. He's such a creep. I hate like I like Littlefinger because like he's skeevy and it's super interesting. But like I hate Littlefinger because he just like makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. You know what I mean? He's definitely yeah. He definitely does that. And she's like, "Don't worry." He's like, "Don't worry. You're safe now. The, these people, Joff, Dantos, Tyrion, will never trouble you again." But is she? We're sailing home. He's creepy. Where's home? Did they go into the Vale? Where? What's going on with Winterfell right now? Winterfell is fucked up. Do, do, is there any, Winterfell is a, there? a burned ruin. It's burned right, down. Exactly. None. Like there's no one there, but it's it's like you can't really even I, sail there either. Warm, so well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have to figure that out. But yeah, I mean that would be the only place that she would want to go. I'm sure, but I don't know. It's one of these great chapters because it answers a ton of questions, but then it also like opens a ton, opens a, and asks a bunch of questions. Well, but leave some too, or create some. New well, I don't yeah, think well, it even leave some. Like, are there any questions we had that are still not answered? Except the the specifics of like what happened with the poisoning, maybe, but for the most part, it's like it answered everything that we had questions on, but opened a whole bunch of new questions. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was a good one. It was a a conclusion and then a, a start of a new branch. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know where they're going. I, I feel like he's probably going back to the veil, vale, but I don't know why that's like I, the only reason I say that is because that's like close, right? That's on the coast. They're already over there, right? Uh, I don't know how close it is, but it, it's it's accessible. It's the most easily, accessible more easily place accessible to, It's closer to than pretty much anywhere else, except for the Stormlands. And I wonder, I wonder if he did go there and do any of the stuff that he was supposed to do there as well. And maybe that is his home now. If he if he married Lysa, right? If he managed to do something like that, that was kind of his deal, home. right? Is they like they sent him off to yeah. win her to their side? He's like, oh, I've already had her before, like. He was kind of talking like, like I feel like yeah, a like banger again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I can try and real quick find out when he left. Is this to say whether or not he had time to get there or not? Yeah, just to like give a rough estimate. Cause I don't remember. Tyrion three was the last time we saw him, which was like two months ago. I guess you have time to get there back. Yeah, you definitely have time to get there back. I don't know if that's enough time to get get her married though, because she's um. She was crazy. I, I don't think that that was going to be a in and out <laughs> kind of deal, crazy. right? Like he was just going to show up and be like, "Hey, we're married now." I mean, if she was crazy, it might be. It, it could go. We want. It could. You could think that would make the engagement take a really long time, or maybe a really short time. It depends on what kind of crazy, you know. Fair. I see what you're Fair. saying. Yeah. All right. So I, I still think that's where they're going. Though that's like the closest, most sensible place. Somewhere we haven't okay. been in a while as well. I'd like to see what's going on out there. So we got some cats up there that we met. Yeah. All right, cool. Do they take the basket or do they take the donkey? <laughs> the basket. <laughs> yeah, Santa is definitely a basket cat. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, we'll see Kyle in the next one for T. Uh, Jamie. Seven. That's probably close. Seven. Bam. Keep that in there. Don't <laughs> cut that up. See Kyle in the next one for Jamie seven, and we'll see the rest of you guys in the spoiler section. Bye bye. Bye. Later, nerds. <laughs> Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Bye, Kyle. Bye, Kyle.
Thanks for hanging out with us. See you on the next one for Jamie 7. Now on the spoiler section. Jeff, what we got? All right. So I got. I actually do have a couple deals here. Go ahead. I'm going to say that there's only two possible people that could have, if we actually believe that the the stone was where the poison was. Okay. Shay and Elena were, are the only two that could have did it. Well, Shay wasn't even at the wedding. But Shay could have grabbed the piece. I'm just saying, people that touched the hairnet. Yeah, she could have grabbed the piece, but she I don't think she could have put she it She could in. have Elena passed it piece. off to somebody. The trick is we don't have Sansa's POV. Uh, it's not, I'm not saying I'm not saying that Shay did it. I'm saying Shay might be involved in it. My thing is we don't have Sansa's POV during the wedding. We have Tyrion's. So yes, we know Elena touched Sansa's hair because it was like a thing when they were talking during cocktail hour. But like during mm-hmm. the wedding, if someone came up and like was messing with Sansa's hair, Tyrion just might not have noticed, right? And maybe that's why we didn't get it in the chapter. Again, it doesn't make sense. You think George would give us what we need to figure out this puzzle? So I, yeah. I tend to agree. That's why it makes sense that it was Elena. The question to me is why involve Sansa? I just don't understand why that you involve Sansa at all. Elena can bring the poison in herself. She she brought it. She took it at cocktail hour. I think even this went is into the, the reason room. why. I think this is the reason why, and I think Sansa kind of realized it. It's because. Now she's holding the smoking gun and not Elena. Yeah, we kind of came to that conclusion last chapter too. She's a scapegoat. You could point it to somebody that it. Yeah, it's not. Oh, oh, I didn't. I don't have anything on me. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Look, she has a hairnet that's missing a piece. Like, test another. Like, if she didn't escape, maybe, maybe the whole part of the plan was to get Tyrion and Sansa in custody. Well, I think if you believe uh, Littlefinger and Elena were both involved, I think the most likely thing is that neither one that they both had a plan to escape with Sansa and neither one knew about the other's plan. Right. Mm -hmm. Like maybe Elena thought after Joffrey dies, I'll be able to get Sansa out of here because Tyrion will be in trouble. Right. So she'll, she'll be widowed and I'll get Sansa out, but Littlefinger just beat her to the punch. Right. So I think that's possible. I don't think it makes sense that Elena knew Littlefinger was going to take Sansa. Yeah. All right. Uh, my next one. Go ahead. Danto says he choked on the pie. Did yeah. you write that down? Well, I know Danto said that. And again, for choking, again, I think it's likely that he choked on the pie just because of the way, if you compare how Joffrey reacts to how Cresson reacts, Cresson doesn't get a, basically Cresson drinks, Mel says a, a sentence. And uh, he, I think I just can't talk that again. last. We I talked about this one. You can go back to the last chapter and talk about it, but I think it aligns more with it being in the pie. Again, I think here everything Littlefinger says to Sansa He here, still ate the pie. Just really quickly. He still ate the pie and had a conversation and then ate some more pie. No. So, yes, he did. Yes, he did. And and this is us replaying he it said, again. He I says he eats pie, says eat the pie, it's good, and then that's the last thing he says. He's dead. No, 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 no. You're wrong again. And I, I love when I can prove you wrong. <laughs> I think you just think this in your head at times. Find it. I'm going to. <clears throat> my uncle hasn't eaten his pigeon pie. Holding the chalice one-handed, Joff jammed his he's other already, into Tyrion's pie. He's already drinking the the wine at this point, just to be clear. Agreed. Before Agreed. all this, go ahead. I agree with you. Okay. I agree just, with you. I'm, I'm shitting on both timelines for Strangler. <laughs> okay. It's ill luck not to eat the pie, he scolded, as he filled his mouth with hot spiced pigeon. See? It's good. Spitting out flakes of crust, he coughed and helped himself to another fistful. Did they say anything else? Dry, though. Needs washing down. Joff took a swallow of wine and coughed again. More violently. I want to see, cough. See you ride that, cough, cough. Pig, uncle. I want. His words broke up in a fit of coughing. Marjorie looked at him with concern. Your grace? It's cough, the pie. Noth, cough, pie. Joff took another drink, or tried to, but all the wine came spewing back out when another spate of coughing doubled him over. His face was turning red. I cough. I can't (laughs) cough, 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 cough. Okay. I think another interesting point there towards me, though, in that is Joff says it's the pie. Like, you think he would know... I mean, I guess the strangler does just constrict your throat, though. So even if yeah. he, even if it was poisoned in the wine, his throat would just start constricting as he's eating the pie. So it probably he does to say him would feel like the pie. But he would probably yeah. feel it would probably feel like he's choking on the pie, even if it was the wine. 
Because I think what we hear is the strangler constricts the throat. So if he drank it, his throat starts constricting, and then he's eating pie. It was still like mm. his the pie would be getting caught in his throat, but even yeah. if it was the wine. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's questionable which way it happened. I think it's one of the things that maybe when we're done with the entire like, thing, the next two books with Kyle, I think we should probably have like maybe just a handful of like big like things that are still open ended where we like kind of lay out all the evidence, go through some quotes like that. And this might be a good one to come back to. But yeah, so do you have anything else? All right, I got I got three more then. I have two. I actually have two more. Um, and then one I think we've already talked about because we've heard the story from Littlefinger already or from from Lysa. Uh, hollow knights turning into dragons. Okay. You don't think that's a metaphor? How so? For what? Fagon. Uh, oh. Uh, the Martell kid. Quentin. Uh, a Tyrion. Like anyone that's a hollow knight. I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I just don't know what hollow knight means, but I, I like that. Like somebody could turn it like a fake. Someone being revealed as a Targaryen. Yeah, I don't know. It just it just caught my eye. It just seemed it seemed weird in the chapter, so I wrote it down. Somebody recently in the Discord, we were talking in the spoiler chat about um, Sansa's potential suitors. Do you know that okay. theory? I know the ones like the the Jan's bronze son or cousin nephew. Well, so in Duncan Egg, there are it relates to Duncan Egg. In in the first Duncan Egg book, there are like five champions, and it's Baratheon, Lannister, Harding. Targaryen and Tyrell maybe and there, there's a theory that Sansa will be at least betrothed to all of these people because the only time we ever hear of Harding is this person you're talking about Harry Harry the heir from mm-hmm. the Vale right so she was betrothed to Baratheon she got married to his gonna get married to Willis Tyrell she got married to Tyrion Lannister there's thought that something sus is, weird is going to be happening with her marrying Harding. And then the last one of these champions is Ty- is Targaryen. So the thought is, is she maybe going to have some relationship with Fagon when he shows up? Mm. I guess you could also extend that to, could Sansa and Jon end up together if Jon is revealed mm. to be being a Targaryen? Uh, yeah, I just thought it was eye-raising, the line. I, I didn't really see its fit in the chapter, so I was just, I'm just like, Throwing through. it out because it, yeah, per dress, uh, yeah, that maybe the dragons will be people that we don't expect to be knights. Like John's not a knight, Tyrion's not a knight. Like a hollow knight, I would think, would be like Brienne or Sandor, right? Or, yeah, like the knight, hound. I feel knight, like yeah. is a hollow knight, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, all right, one more real one here, and I think it's a big. I think uh, Kyle was kind of onto this as well, but not for the same reason. T- uh, Peter says that he was the perfect cat's paw. Yep. So it's weird. I, th- I heard somewhere recently that we don't ever hear of the dagger being referred to as the cat's paw dagger. But I don't know if that maybe the dagger itself is never referred to as the cat's paw dagger. You're saying in the books. that's just show show stuff. I think they called it the dagger, the cat's paw dagger. But I'm pretty sure they refer to like the assassin that dealt as, with the dagger as, he, as the, him cat's being the cat's paw. Yeah. So I, I think it's close enough. Um, I thought it was weird, too. Again, you know my big problem with Littlefinger being the dagger guy we talked about the last time. He wasn't in Winterfell. And again, you can go down this hole. He sent a message. There was messages back and forth. But or me, he just, like, maybe, maybe he just like played Inception with a young Joffrey. But he didn't know Bran was going to be hurt. Like He would have had to set that in motion before Well, time. it doesn't matter. Maybe he just said, like, hey, here's a cool dagger. Well, let's think. Like Maybe he didn't. Maybe he just knew Joffrey was kind of a fuckface. And he's like, hey, let me give this kid a dagger and see what he does with it. And I'll just use whatever he does to my advantage. Right. He's going to do something. Maybe. Again, I, I'm, I'm very much speculation, but he ends up doing giving it to an assassin to kill Bran, which is like, oh, my God, jackpot reasoning. But let's just say like Joffrey's like walking through the market, throws dagger at. I don't know, somebody, and he could be like, if oh. If starts well, a fight, there's still going to be a few between the Lannisters and the Starks. I, I see that. It just, like, again, my problem with it is, like, the little finger reveals are kind of like, oh, holy shit, he was planning this for so long, right? Like, this one, mm-hmm. like, clearly this has been in motion for since for a book and a half, and it wasn't just like, oh, I hope Dantos ends up Sans and Sans offshore. The thing with John Aaron, we find out he had Lysa, like, all the little finger reveals are like, holy shit, he's such a mastermind. 
Do we know Littlefinger? Like, do we know Littlefinger was somewhere during that whole trip? Like, is it confirmed no, I, I, that he was? I think he was in, just offshore. I think he was just chilling offshore. I don't think he went anywhere. No, 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 not now. I'm saying when when they go north, when they went north in the, in the beginning, was it confirmed that he like was in the? Like, I'm not writing it out that he couldn't have like pulled a Varus and like been there, hidden, been disguised. there, disguised that, okay, up. If that was, the, I could see that being the reveal. Like, if that was the reveal, then that might be cool. Right. Like but there's that, a lot that's of my problem with it. Like Mance Raider, Mance Raider's there. I just, yeah, no, I get that. I just don't see how, and if that were, if that, if it turned out to be that way, I could see it being cool. I just don't see how like the stuff we've proposed so far, like whether it was him just giving Joffrey a dagger and hoping for the best or letters being sent back and forth. It just doesn't seem like a cool reveal. You know what I mean? That yeah. one I could see if he's like, yeah, I was actually there the whole time. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe. Yeah. The only other ones, I, the ones that I had, my points were kind of a lot that Kyle nailed, right? Like, yeah. First off, Oswell Kettleblack. How does that's a, that's a great guess that Oswell is a Kettleblack, and the kettle, he even said the Kettleblack. Is he dad. a Kettleblack? He is a Kettleblack, and he's all their dads. <laughs> oh fuck! I didn't know that at all. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of funny because the kettle. I, I mean, it makes against, sense. It sounds like every name. Like I actually thought it was the name of the one kid. Yeah, well, it's funny because. The uh, the whole kettle black thing is, Cersei There's thought the kettle Cersei's blacks were man. under her thumb, but yeah. Tyrion says I've been, but Bronze been paying them two gold, for every one gold Cersei's been paying them, so they're actually telling me everything that Cersei's been telling them, and now their dad works for Littlefinger, so maybe their dad's been telling Littlefinger everything that they've been telling Tyrion, who's been telling, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like this yeah. chain of I think they're working for me, but really there's somebody above me that they're spying on me, and for. it kind of proves what he was saying about. What's the guy's name that dies? Dantos. How Dantos, like, oh, like, money will get people to talk. So, yeah, like, these yeah, guys exactly. are getting paid and just talking to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, no, Kyle Kyle nailed that for sure. I, I didn't realize that it was the dad, so I, something that I forgot. The other thing that was, Kyle was kind of, like, on the nose about was, like, sailing home. Like, I feel like he didn't yeah. think for a second they were actually going back to Winterfell. He's like, what's that? No, nah, he was like, yeah, they're going to the Vale. Yeah, it, which is true. They go to the Vale in the long term. But in the short term, they go to Littlefinger's home, which is in the Fingers, which I, yeah, I guess yeah, yeah. maybe is the Vale. Uh, it's the outskirts of the it's Vale territory, right? Or is it River Run territory? It's Vale territory. I know it's right all, right south of it, right? It's actually north of the Vale. That's what confuses me. Yeah. Oh. Like if you just like go from like, if you go from like Heron Hall to the eerie and just like keep going to the ocean that's like the fingers it's like yeah uh so. yeah he was spot on so yeah that's where they're going he was on that and then the last one i had was this little finger towards the end says in another world you would have been my daughter not ned's that's her part that she plays for the next books the last two yeah. books is she's elaine little fingers bastard daughter bastard yeah. daughter yep yep uh and we know the story that lice is the one that because because we know that she took the tansy tea, right? Kyle doesn't know that yet. He was sus on some of it. Kyle was kind of on, but didn't know like what tansy meant. Yeah, and it's so long ago. He put Littlefinger and Lysa together though at one point, but yeah, he didn't know what li- t- tansy meant, and yeah, it wasn't clear. Do you think Littlefinger actually believes that it was Cat? Like he was all fucked up. I think and... he does. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, he was fucked up. At, basically, I think he he slept with Lysa. Because I think he knows he he took. Lysa's maidenhead. I think oh, he really? knows that, and he also thinks he took Cat's maidenhead. Mm. So I Damn. think he slept with Lysa at a different time, but after the battle for Cat, he was really fucked up on, like, Milk of the Poppy and shit, yeah, and yeah. Lysa came to him, and I think he yeah. thought that was Cat coming to him. Basically being like, yeah. oh, I'm so glad you fought for me. Right. You know what I mean? At least we can yep. spend this night together before I have to get married away. But, yeah, so, I, yeah, I just thought it was kind of cool how it's like it's barely foreshadowing in another world. You would be my daughter. Yeah. In the rest of the, the next two books, she plays the role of your daughter. So yep, that was all I had. Did you have anything else? Uh, no, the last one I had was him talking about the maidenhood. Cause, uh, we just kind of, we knew that it was Lysa and yeah, just for recalling that, that fact. So no, that's all. That's all I got. I mean, and this is one of the storylines that kind of happens pretty quick, the rest of this, because they go to the Fingers, they go to the Eerie. Lysa is, I think, pushed out of the window by the end of this. All at the end of this book? By the end of this book, yeah. We find out about John Aaron. That'll be a, another great reveal. So a lot of that stuff's coming up. So we'll see you guys there, and we'll see you guys in the next one for Jamie, Jamie 7. Jamie 7. All right. Bye.